Hi everyone, Matt Hetherington here from mhtabletennis.com and in my table tennis tutorial video today I'm going to be looking a little bit more at the basic foundations of blocking. But blocking obviously is something that's very important not just in matches but also in practice and I think uh, it's a skill that's overlooked in practice too much. If you want to practice in better training groups and with better partners it's very important to be able to provide a high level of practice for your partners. And I think blocking is one of the skills that is pivotal, that you really need. And it can make the difference between whether people want to practice with you or not. So working on blocking is very important. Working on the consistency of your blocking is, is very important. And being able to provide a high level of training for your practice partners um, is really crucial. Obviously blocking is also very important for matches and getting these basic foundations for blocking is important. You can add to them later on and make them more complex, but in the beginning, getting a good block is very important. You obviously are not able to attack all the time. Sometimes your opponent is gonna be attacking against you and you need to have the tools to be able to deal with that. And having a high quality block is something that is going to play a very important role and whether or not you're able to win points when you're not the first player initiating in the point. So when you're not making that first opening loop or you're being uh, third ball attacked against, having a good block is important. And also it's a tool that we can use that has high safety margins that helps us to really pressure the placement that we're putting against our opponent as well. I'm going to go through some very simple tips. One of the things that's really important is stability. So when you're blocking, you need the position, whether it's forehand or backhand, your body weight has to be low, center of gravity in the middle here, chest forward, and in a good stable position with good balance. The next important thing when you're blocking is to keep your racket up. So blocking low at the table like this, or like this, is not going to give you a good margin of safety or good control. So a lot of the times when you're blocking, your racket is above your elbow. Okay, so when you move to here on your forehand or your backhand, your racket is up and sometimes a little more vertical than usual. So you bring your racket up this way. Okay, so a lot of time blocking backhand, your racket is quite close to your face. So you can really get a good perspective of the incoming ball. Another very important part of blocking is not to do too much. So you have to use the speed or the spin on the incoming ball as part of your block. It's very hard to control heavy spin or high speed. And if you do too much or you try and hit through the ball too much, you're not going to have that control that you need. So the block is very much quite a subtle and very small action. Of course, you can later add more to those subtle actions. You can add small uh, bits of topspin or maybe sidespin deviations, but for the purpose of these basic foundations, the idea is that we do very little. We're just trying to control the ball. So here are some examples of backhand and forehand blocking just simply against an opponent who's looping.
when you're dealing with more topspin, maybe a slower ball or a really heavy topspin, you need to bring your racket up more and close the angle over the top. So you're really touching on top of the ball and when you're having somebody play a lot of power to you, you can get behind the ball more and not so much on top and your racket doesn't quite have to be as high. Once you've practiced the basic forehand and backhand block, you need to start working on blocking transitions. So there are a lot of drills that you use as transitions for your backhand and forehand that you can also turn into blocking exercises. In this one, I'm doing a fixed pattern of backhand and forehand blocking and just working on transitioning, lining up the ball relative to my body, making sure I keep my racket in front, especially on my forehand. So I don't want to be blocking in line with my body. I need to keep my racket in front. Finally, a good drill to practice the limitations of your blocking is to have your opponent hitting forehand anywhere on the table and you having to block. This ties in a lot with some of the videos I've done already, um, one of them on backhand forehand transitions and the other one yesterday on reactions, recovery, anticipation. So if you haven't watched those videos yet, they can be quite helpful here. And we're looking at things like making sure that after we block a ball, getting back into this recovery position between so that you're ready for the next ball. some basic drills that you can practice uh, when you're first getting used to blocking it's good to just make sure that you very, have a very high level of consistency against topspin and then once you start getting into more advanced blocking skills working against really heavy opening loops or third ball attacks adding variations um, that all comes afterwards but for this video I just wanted to focus on those basic elements of blocking and please I implore everybody, if you think that your blocking needs work, take some time during your practice to create some different blocking variables that you can work on. Your practice doesn't always have to be about attacking. Thank you again for joining me. Um, these series of videos have been really fun so far. If you haven't checked out some of the other ones, um, there are at least 30 on the channel now that go through different elements of serving, footwork, um, choosing different drills for different areas of the game, short and long pushing, opening up. Um, I've tried to cover quite a good range of topics. There are still more to come. Thank you guys for joining me and I'll be back again tomorrow.